The following program is brought to you by Element 14, the electronics community where you can connect and collaborate with top engineers from around the world. Join now at element14.com slash presents. Hello, and welcome back to Workbench Wednesdays. My name is James, and on this show, we talk about the equipment found on your electronics workbench. Back some time ago, we posted a video about the basics of an electronic load. These are like electronically controlled resistors used to test power sources. Here's a clip from that video. One thing I do not like about this unit is that it is very, very loud. One day I really need to change the fan. Well, that day is here. We're going to swap out that noisy fan. And since this is a show about measurements, we can use this Tenma sound meter to test the difference before and after the swap. Let's start with a quick overview of what this meter does. Up at the top is the microphone or sound sensor. This particular meter comes with a windscreen. I didn't get a chance to test it outside, but I did measure the noise from my dehumidifier, and the screen did not seem to make a difference in that measurement. The middle of the screen displays the measurement in decibels or dBs. The meter does have an A or C mode, but to be frank, I did not understand what these mean. The manual says if the C mode noise is higher, then there is more low frequency content. So using the dehumidifier, I can sort of see how it has more low frequency content. There are two sensitivity ranges, high and low, which have different ranges of loudness that they can detect. Fast and slow are two sample modes, which seem to determine the amount of averaging used. To understand that, let's go to my oscilloscope. During boot, the fan runs at full speed and then it slows down. Using the meter's slow mode, it took much longer for the reading to stabilize back to the same ambient level as the fast mode. Also, when the scope clicked its relays, the fast mode caught it while slow mode kind of missed it. So for continuous noises, you'll want to use slow mode, while for intermittent noises, leave it on fast. Last, there is a max hold function to display the loudest sound level detected. Okay, now that we saw some of the basic features, let's take a baseline measurement of how much noise the electronic load makes before we put in the new fan. Before we start the test, I should mention that none of my power supplies can max out the load. It is designed to handle 30 amps. In fact, I don't even know if I have wires that can handle that much current. So I'm only going to be testing it to five amps, which is what I normally use it for. First, I put the sound meter near the load and turn it on. Here you can see the sound level is about 62 decibels. Next, I enable the load to draw 1.95 amps as a constant current supply. And the noise is, well, actually it's about the same, maybe one decibel more. Next, let's get near the max of the power supply by drawing 4.95 amps. And look at the sound reading now, almost 64 decibels. Well, here's the thing. It's not the load. It turns out the load's fan spins at a constant speed. The additional noise is from the power supply. So to isolate the load, I put a plastic container over it and stuck an action camera inside so we could see the sound meter's level. Inside of this container, we can see, or at least I could see, about 70 decibels with either current draw. Okay, so remember that 70 decibel level because that gives us a baseline to compare to later. Next, let's crack open the load's case and see what we're dealing with. Inside the case, we can see the essential components of the electronic load. There is the fan that is blowing over what looks like the DC power supply. Here is one of two MOSFETs acting as the variable load. And this component that looks like a pipe is probably a very low resistance current shunt. One more baseline test I want to check is what is the temperature rise of the MOSFETs when loaded. Since they are using that big hunk of metal as a heat sink, I stuck my DMM's thermocouple into the transformer's bracket. That way, I do not have to make any modifications to attach the probe. While drawing 4.95 amps, I let the load run for about 10 minutes, which caused the temperature to rise to 39 degrees. 
Granite, the case is open, but this gives us a measurement for comparison. Next, I went through the process of removing the fan, which only had four screws. I did take at least a minute to appreciate the massive heat sink attached to the load's MOSFETs. After making a few physical measurements, I ordered an appropriate replacement. The swap was pretty easy since they were the same size and both ran off the same voltage. I only had to replace the connection on the new fan so that I could use the same JST style header from the old fan. After the swap, I checked the temperature rise the same way as we did before. I ran the load at 4.95 amps and the temp only got to 39 degrees after about 10 minutes. During the test, when I switched to 4.95 amps, I immediately noticed just how loud the power supply was compared to the load. So the load itself is definitely quieter. I decided to switch back to the super calibrated sound chamber measurement once again. Watching the camera inside, where I remembered to turn the backlight on this time, we can see the new level was only 60 dB compared to the 70 dB we measured before. There has been both an audible and quantitative improvement in sound output. Now, before I wrap up, let's take a peek inside of this particular 10 meter. I'm almost too embarrassed to admit this, but it wasn't until I went to tear this down that I noticed on the back that there is a mount for a tripod. In all of my early shots, I struggled to get the microphone propped up so that you could see it, when it would have been much easier just to attach it to a tripod. Another unexpected feature is that the microphone element itself disconnects from the rest of the meter. It appears this is intended for applications where an extension cord is needed to get the microphone closer to the target. I wonder where that could have been useful. Inside, it is a surprisingly simple circuit. Most of the ICs are 7400 series logic chips, shift registers, or box standard op amps like the TL072. The only unusual IC that I could find was the AD363, which is an RMS to DC converter. Totally makes sense because the meter works by converting sound levels to voltages and then measures the RMS value of that. By the way, that blob near the LCD probably contains the logic to control the max hold and the display. One note, if you do happen to buy one of these and you want to take it apart, do not confuse the calibration potentiometers for screws. There are a bunch of them on the PCB, and two of them are even exposed in the battery compartment. There is no telling what happens if you give all of these a couple of unintentional twists. I am still bothered by that DBA and DBC thing. If you happen to know what it means, could you please head over to the Element 14 community and let me know? There's a link with this video. While you are there, you will find show notes for this episode, which includes links related to measuring sound. One link you should definitely check out is F. Milburn's The Scream PCB Project. It is an LM386 based amplifier with PCB art that mimics an iconic painting. By the way, moving forward, when I do equipment reviews, I do plan to start using this sound meter to measure their sound output. Well, thank you for watching the quick upgrade on my electronic load. For now, it is time for me to get back to measuring the strange sounds around my electronics workbench. Mm -hmm.